Shooter hit me again. <laughs> Chief, I think we got a hit on our Me TV Fresno. Now on Comcast Channel 187. Hi, I'm John Malice, and welcome to this edition of Connect With Me, live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Friday morning. A lot going on. Our guest today, live in the studio, is Luis Chavez. He is a member of the Fresno Unified School District Board. He also works for the City of Fresno. A lot to talk about, and also the ongoing situation to find that suspect, that lone suspect in Boston. Back in just a moment. course kind of a wild day around here and certainly keeping tabs on what's going on in the city of Boston and I realize by the time this thing replays at 730 tonight that uh, the suspect may already be caught. I am talking about Boston being on a total lockdown uh, right now. They're looking for that second uh, suspect. One suspect is dead. His younger brother still on the run. There is suspect number one. He's 19-year-old Zokar uh, Zarnev. His 26-year-old brother Tomerlan Zarnev, who was killed in a wild shootout overnight, went down in a wild gun battle. It all happened in the early morning hours while we were all sleeping as police swarmed over Watertown. That's a neighborhood, a suburb of Boston. Hundreds of SWAT team officers surrounded a home there, as you can see here. Guns were drawn at a firefight between the officers. The suspects uh, in the process uh, fired and killed an MI. T police officer Sean Collier. He was shot and killed in the line of duty. Later, there was a wild car chase through the streets of Watertown and through Boston where the suspects were actually throwing hand grenades out the window. Somehow, the suspect, Tomerlan, was killed in that firefight, as I said. Law enforcement officials say that an explosive trigger was actually found on his body in the morgue. Now, police set up a 20-block perimeter in the area. They don't know if the suspect uh, Zokar slipped through that perimeter or not. Officers say that he hijacked a car. Now, since that car has been found, and so 19-year-old Zokar uh, Zarnev is on the run. His 26-year-old brother, uh, Tomerlan, is dead. Both are from Chechnya, according to officials, and we don't have any other details, of course, other, other than the fact that they both had green cards. Uh, they've been in the United States for many, many years. As I said, both, in fact, uh, one is dead, the other one's still on the loose, and in fact, by tonight, when this uh, replays at 7.30, uh, that 19-year-old suspect may, in fact, have already been caught. We're going to talk about the Fresno Unified School District uh, board member, Luis Chavez, uh, today. He is here representing District Number 2. All your concerns about Bullard. We're not going to be talking about the uh, Boston incident, although we'll be keeping tabs on that. But he is here to take your phone calls, and we're back with our show. Uh, connect with me on Me TV Fresno in just a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency Cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool Cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. Okay, as mentioned, uh, they're still looking for that suspect in the city of Boston, of course, Watertown, which is a suburb of Boston. Of course, uh, he is 19-year-old Zokar 
uh, Zarnef, uh, his brother, 26-year-old Tomerlon, was shot dead in a shootout. Wild police chase through the streets of Boston uh, early this morning while everyone was asleep. Both are from Chechnya. Our topic today, though, is not about that. We've got a guest in the studio. His name is Luis Chavez. He's a member of the Fresno Unified School District uh, Board. Welcome, Luis. How are you? Thank you, John. Doing great. Yeah, sorry to bring you on during this time when everything is going on, but that's okay. No, definitely. Thoughts and prayers are with the people of Boston out there as they go through this uh, difficult period. Yeah, let's hope they find that suspect. Don't yes. know if he got through that 20-block perimeter that police put up, but uh, a lot to that's talk about in the city of Fresno and specifically the Fresno Unified School District. Give us an update on what's going on now at the la what happened at the last school board meeting there was a vote that took mm -hmm. place right yeah there was actually a workshop that was conducted on the issue of uh, student discipline and it was the restorative justice we had about 200 students and parents that came out in support of, of the Fresno Unified School District revamping their process so had a workshop uh, gave some guidance to the superintendent and we're gonna come back with a resolution in the next couple of weeks and then uh, implementing a, uh, an action plan to implement that Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is Pete Mijas, the former Fresno County Superintendent, was here uh, not long ago talking about a district breakup. He mm -hmm. believes the district should be split up into not two, but four oh. different districts because the district has become too big, too cumbersome, too difficult to handle. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I have a lot of respect for uh, Dr. Mijas, uh, obviously mm -hmm. him being a, his roots in Roosevelt, but I think we're going to disagree on that. Why? And uh, I, I'll give you a couple of reasons. Uh, one of the most educational experiences I had professionally was working in Kings County, where Kings County is this fragmented set of school districts where they don't have high student achievement. Yeah. So if we're going to correlate uh, student achievement with smaller school districts, we've got examples here in the Central Valley and statewide that says that that's not necessarily true. Um, uh, conversely, we have a bigger school district than us, uh, Long Beach Unified, which I just had the opportunity to tour uh, this past week, that is doing great gains in student achievement. So I'm not sure the data shows that. And I think anything that a city, a community does should be in the best interest and, and ultimately closing that achievement gap for our students. Right. I want to give out the phone number here, area code 559-436-ME-TV. We changed our phone number this week. Uh, very easy one to remember. There it is up on the screen right there. 436-ME-TV. Uh, hit option 11 and you can call in and talk to Luis about the Fresno Unified School District. You can talk to him about the city of Fresno and what's going on there. There's a garbage vote coming up, of course, on June the 5th. But getting back to the Fresno Unified School District, 436-ME-TV is the phone number. I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Mijas, as I said, was here. He was talking about size. Mm -hmm. The correlation between a si the size of a district, a smaller mm -hmm. district, I guess, his contention is it's easier to handle, easier to manage, easier to keep track of students, easier to uh, make sure those students go to class and do their work and stay out of trouble. Right. You wouldn't agree with that? Um, I would agree with that if we had some, some specific uh, research uh, that proves that. And, and like I said, uh, not to pick to, uh, to on anybody here in close to our area, but for example, uh, Partier Unified, very small okay. school district, um, has some of the lowest performing schools in the state. Um, and then we also, again, citing Long Beach is history. One of the, actually, they're bigger than Fresno Unified. They have great student uh, gains in, in there. So I don't necessarily think the research shows that. Well, let me put up some that. numbers on the screen mm -hmm. that, uh, I, you know, many people will look at these numbers and maybe disagree with you. The API scores for Fresno, Sanger, and Central. Now, look at those scores, mm -hmm. Luis. Fresno Unified, 724. Sanger, a much smaller school district, has 822, higher. And Central Unified has 772. As you know, Central Unified is a much smaller district. Right. Let's take a look at the API scores for African Americans and Latinos. And so the African American API scores, Fresno Unified, look how low they are, 664. Right. Sanger, 817. Central Unified, 713. How about Latinos? Very important here. Fresno Unified, of course, again, lagging behind at 708. Sanger in at 797 and Central at 751. When you look at those numbers, right. don't those tell you that smaller is better? Uh, not necessarily. There, there are different dynamics that, that, that play out. Obviously, Sanger has a, a much smaller uh, African-American population. Uh, I think yeah. the city size is about 10,000. 
Um, so, I mean, they always say that there's there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. And not to say that those numbers are not accurate, um, but if we're gonna if we're gonna do something that big, that impactful, and obviously a lot of consequences related to that, how uh, assets are split up, and then you're also giving up the economies of scale, where Fresno Unified has economies of scale, and they actually pay cheaper prices, which is more of a benefit for taxpayers as well. But the main thing is student achievement. I don't necessarily agree that a smaller school district will perform better and we have various examples across the, the, the Central Valley and the state that points to that direction. Too. What about the complaints about mm -hmm. Bullard? Sure. There, the, the Bullard area, right. Bullard High School. Uh, many parents, many students even. Uh, Michelle Azadorian mm -hmm. represents uh, that district. Uh, her brother is Mark Arax, of course. He uh, right. helps uh, formulate stories for the Fresno Bee. You know what's been in the Bee uh, recently sure. about Bullard. Bullard High School used to be one of the best. Mm -hmm. Now it appears it's one of the worst. Uh, there's no feeder program uh, that goes into there. There's no gate school, so to speak, uh, that serves that area. If those smart kids in that area, they have to go south. So it's like, it's you know, now you're bussing kids mm -hmm. back and forth. Right. They feel they're being ignored by the district. They need more money they need a better feeder system. What's right. your response? Um, well, we have smart kids across all the district, not just in, in, in the Bullard area. And I, I actually agree with uh, with some of their uh, concerns. And what I'd like to see is um, resources not just directed to one specific area. I'd like to see some of those programs that they were referring to um, at Roosevelt, in the Roosevelt area, which is the area I represent. So I think on, on some of the issues that, that were discussed, they came and spoke, and everybody knows that Bullard's always had very vocal advocates for their community. That's great. Um, I admire that. But I also share that passion passion for uh, students in the southern part of Fresno as well. Okay, let's put up some numbers up on the screen as far as Bullard is concerned. Maybe we'll put the class size up first and look at uh, the Bullard class size. Fresno Unified, the average is uh, 33. Seven of 470 classes had more than 40. Now look at this, 85 classes have uh, the capacity of 37 students. 43 classes are at overload right now with more than 37. So the class size alone, if you look at those numbers, it's going to tell you that there's an overcrowding problem at Bullard. Um, and when you have overcrowding problems, you, you can, you know, it's like a domino effect. All sorts of other problems follow along with it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I said this during the, the campaign that I, that I do favor uh, smaller class sizes. Yeah. Um, I think we have to do it strategically, though. I don't think we should just do it across the board. Um, I've been talking to other uh, colleagues across the state and some of the plans they've done, and I think with the state uh, changing their local funding formula, we'll have some opportunities to be more strategic. Perhaps some classes are 20 students. Maybe some classes are 10 or 15, depending on the needs of the students. Um, but I think if we just say we're going to do across the board a class reduction, I don't think it's it's, it's the best bang for, for taxpayers as well. Why, so not? Why not? Well, because uh, the, de the needs are different uh, for, for students. But for it's more difficult for the teacher mm -hmm. to teach a class that has students uh, overloading a classroom with 40 or more, or yeah, even no. 37. You're, you're putting too much pressure on one teacher. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think along with those class sizes that yeah. we have should come extra support. For example, a teacher's aid in the classroom that can help uh, with everyone no the curriculum. That? Well, that, well, that's that's where the the budgeting comes in, and that's right. where that local fund and formula gives flexibility. How much can a student learn? How much can a student learn if mm -hmm. there are forty kids in a class and he can't get he or she can't get that one-on-one -on -one attention? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think ideally, if if you had a, what's a the ideal group, class size for you? I would say around for K through six, probably about twenty-five, twenty-seven. Um, That's a students. lot of students. Yeah, it, it is. But, um, you know, when I worked at, at City College, I taught there. Um, I had big classes that ranged from 80 to 40. Different yeah, but that's subject city matter. college. You're talking true, about K true, through true, six. True. But it's still that teacher to, to student ratio that we're right, talking about. Right, but when they're small, you're talking about smaller kids, and I have smaller kids. Sure. It's a different learning process. They're in the, they're in the beginning stages mm -hmm. of learning, and it's a, right. it's a different process. So 
therefore they might need more one-on-one -on -one attention. Some kids will, some kids um, are a little bit more far ahead, which is why the district invested in the pre-kindergarten programs that they're going to be expanding in the next couple of months. Where we'll be able to serve um, thousands more students and they'll come better prepared to kind of relieve some of the, the teacher pressures that we have later on during the school year. we got to go to break, but sure. quickly, would you agree to pour more money and more pay more attention to what's going on at Bullard? Yeah, I would agree with, with working on them, um, and then I would agree with also working on addressing and meeting the needs of students across our district, in the Roosevelt area, in the McLean, the Fresno High. Well, what about addressing the needs of Bullard? Would you agree that they need yeah, help? absolutely. I work with anybody that wants to improve the education of our kids. All right, we're talking with Luis Chavez here. He is uh, representing District 2 from the Fresno Unified School District. Your phone number is, uh, your phone calls, I should say, are important. A brand new phone number this week installed at 436-ME-TV, 436 me TV. Back in a moment. I love a joke. Say, hey, Lucky. Yeah, Ricky. A tramp came up to me in the street and he said he hadn't had a bite in weeks. What'd you do, bite him? <laughs> Opening joke. That's Opening what? butler joke, buddy. Come on. That the master says to the butler, uh, Jeeves, did you put fresh water in the goldfish bowl? And the butler says, Why? They didn't drink up what I gave him last night. <laughs> you know that ancient joke about the guy who saves his regiment, shoots the cook? <laughs> no. How's it go? <laughs> with Luis Chavez, District 2, Fresno Unified School District. Your phone number is important, 436-ME-TV. I want to put up another graphic on the screen, and this is the uh, Reform Fresno Unified. And here is what uh, they had to say, their claims, to launch the Bullard Regional Pilot Program, dress code, working uh, law magnet, a sports medicine magnet, gate classes in the feeder programs, and $50 million in new facilities. All right, now, Reform Fresno Unified, uh, those people say that Michael Hansen, the superintendent, made these promises to Bullard and now he's backing down. They're backing out. The school board is backing off. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I don't know. I don't know what promises uh, uh, Superintendent Hansen made in the past, obviously being sworn in in, in November. But I yeah. can tell you that my own personal thoughts on that is, and when they came and spoke to, to the school board and presented this, um, I would like to see some of those uh, programs implemented in the Roosevelt area as well. Um, the the Bullet Regional Pilot Program uh, would be good. The well, would you agree if, if Hanson made these promises, he should follow through? No, uh, Hanson. A promise is a promise is a Hansen promise. Hanson doesn't speak for the board. The board gives direction, and, and Hanson implements that. Okay, right. but so you're saying he should not have made the promise then? I don't know if he did or not. But if he did, he should not have. The board should have done it. Correct. Okay. All right. Phone call here. Good morning. You're on Connect with me. How are you? Good morning. Um, I'm not on this show, but in a previous show, I saw the footage that uh, was, that was taken with the phone on the Bullard campus, uh, showing some uh, scenes of violence in, in the uh, corridor and the bathroom and such as that. I think uh, we have that video. Let's put it up or roll it while you're talking on the phone there, sir. Um, I right. do believe we have some of that uh, video still in the system there. Go ahead. What's your question? Well, uh, my comment was, I don't think it's unique to Bullard. Uh, I think we... Anybody with a camera on any of the campuses, the Sunnyside, Fresno, uh, Roosevelt High School, all these campuses experience similar types of incidents. And I think it's sort of unfairly focused uh, a lot of attention on Bullard because it seems to uh, fit, fit uh, uh, the purpose of the, uh, of the movement to splinter off Bullard uh, from Fresno Unified. But isn't it, in fact, uh, incidents of violence widespread across the district and I don't think it's endemic to a, a large school district like Fresno is for I mean don't don't you think okay don't you think that no matter where the fighting takes place it should be exposed whether it's at Bullard Edison doesn't matter where it is we're not trying to exploit any um, particular school in the district or single anybody out but if it's happening it should be reported should it not yeah, absolutely. do you agree with that? Uh, I do, absolutely. absolutely. It should be reported. I agree, mm -hmm. I agree with it too. I, I just think that uh, similar footage could be seen at Sunnyside High School. Uh, it's not necessarily unique to Bullard. It isn't unique to Fresno Unified. And uh, my final comment is, Fresno Unified is having uh, uh, in these tough economic times 
is this a good time to even consider splintering the district when you have services that must be provided district wide now we have to we have a splinter district that it's going to have to have support services etc cetera, etc cetera. and how would this be cost effective and at what point is it uh, a fiscal mistake thanks okay go ahead yeah um th those are actually some of my same concerns when you when you talk about splitting the the district up and and the, this the, the power of economies of scale and the best bang for the buck for taxpayers out there too and then there are other um because i did have an opportunity to research this this splitting up of the district how are assets split up how are the specific bond money that voters collectively approved um how will that be divvied up will one area receive more than the other will there be equity and those are some of the issues that i've spoken up but during our board meetings um uh, on how we go about allocating resources because we have to be fair and we have to be equitable for all students across our district. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I do want to say though that um, this district, it appears because of all the problems that have been on the, uh, the school board with uh, Tony Vang mm -hmm. and the replacement and then the election and everything that's going on, it doesn't seem that the school board, not you in particular, you've only been there a couple of months, right has been able to handle all of the problems, whether it's gangs, whether it's truancies, whether it's low test scores, the district can't handle it. They might be okay financially, but they can't handle all the problems that come with it. Well, that's why I think right now we have a, a, a very unique opportunity. There's a couple of things coming down the, the pipeline for, for our school district. And Such that's as? Common Core, uh, a change in, in fundamental ways of how we teach and, and, and how our students learn in the district, uh, focusing more on critical thinking, on analyzing, rather than just this rudimentary A, B, and C teaching to the test. Right. Uh, vocational training programs, that's going to be big for our district coming up, too. Before we go to break here, Luis, I want to put another graphic on the screen. It's from the National Assessment of Education Progress. Uh, that graphic there, very uh, detailed. And this is uh, according to the NAEP, an article written by John Fensterwald in both uh, regarding math, Fresno Unified ranked among the lowest in the nation out of 21 urban school districts, including uh, Los Angeles, Cleveland, Washington, D.C., Milwaukee, and Detroit, near the bottom in reading and math. Mm -hmm. for Fresno Unified. Right. Yeah, we definitely have some uh, some work to do. Um, and I think in the next couple of months, uh, the board will really be looking at, at really outlining a, a strategic plan for our district the next uh, five years. Yeah. And I think that will really go a long ways in addressing those, uh, those challenges we have. All right. We're going to take your phone calls. Luis Chavez is here from District 2, Fresno Unified School District, 436-ME-TV. 436-ME-TV. He's been kind enough to take the time to come in here and talk to us about all of these very difficult and pressing issues with Fresno Unified back in just a moment. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want money. This Omana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this heavy duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. And we're back here on Connect With Me on Me TV Fresno. 436 Me TV is the telephone number. Hit option 11. And then we'll uh, patch you into our guest, Luis Chavez, who is here. You know, he's on the school board, but uh, he also works for Sal Quintero at City Hall. So you kind of, you wear two hats, don't you? I, I do. You're a I busy guy. Hats. I am it's very busy. It's hard to get you on the phone. It's very, yeah. yeah, and, uh, you have very to little. send you a text because that's how we get in touch with you now. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> so the city vote is coming up on the garbage. Yes. And uh, that's coming up the first Tuesday in mm -hmm. June. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, I'm sure you saw Hostetter's piece in the B the other day. Yeah talking about all the legal haggling with the judge and this and that, you know, the wording right. in, the, in, the, in the ballot. And so, so what do you make of all this? What's, what's going to happen? What, what, in, the out, in, in the end, what's the outcome going to be, in, I in think, your opinion? I think in the end, uh, I mean, right now it's, it's in the voters' hands. Uh, they'll decide uh, if they want privatization, if they don't. What do you um, think the voters want out there? What do you think uh, the Fresno citizens I'm, want? I'm hearing a lot that uh, <laughs> people uh, are quite happy with their with their uh, garbage collection services now being provided by the city. You in uh, favor of privatizing? No, I'm I actually. Know Sal is not. I'm not. I'm not in in, in support of it, um, and and for very specific reasons. So we the city went through the commercial 
uh, privatization last year. Yeah. And uh, the same arguments were made uh, about the rates going down. Well, now we have rates going up for the commercial clients that we have. And that's what I anticipate, and I think for especially the the areas but that I represent. They say the first two years, if it privatizes, it'll go down by what seventeen percent. Correct, and that is absolutely true. What it doesn't say is that after that, after that, two uh, years, two years, period? the rates go up, and that is, is definitely. Is that what the, it says in the contract? Correct. That How much? Correct. How much will it go? Up? Uh, it's capped at about um, I think CPI index about two to three percent, um, but they can request these. Um, but uh, even now, down. Luis, they're they're okay. constantly going up, even with the fact that the city is right. handling the garbage now on the on the uh, private side. That is true, but because of Prop uh, two two eighteen, you you are not allowed to charge more than what the service costs to operate. So that's a trade-off. Where if you got a private company, they're obviously in it for the profit. And so the city is 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 following the letter of the law according to two eight Prop two eighteen. Pro correct. That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, other city issues. Of course, we got water meters uh, mm -hmm. that are in. You've got a lot of graffiti in town. You've had mm -hmm. stories on the news recently, even in the B, talking about lighting fixtures that are going out yeah. around the city. That's a huge issue. Uh, you've got gang problems in the city. Right. Um, you want to touch on any of those issues? Yeah, I, I think especially um, uh, with uh, the, some of the work that we're doing in, in, in our office with uh, Councilmember Quintero, um, we just got to go back to basics, potholes and streetlights, and that's got to be the, the priority for this next. Look, in about six weeks, we're about to discuss the next budget for the next year, and a priority okay, should be so, those potholes so, and streetlights. So you got this $5 million gap, according to mm -hmm. the mayor. Um Who's at odds with the mayor right now on the council? Anybody? I don't think anybody is at odds. I think everybody understands that, that the mayor has a, a, a hard job to do. Um, and uh, we just got to work together and come up with those solutions. That's the main thing. Uh, we got to have that dialogue. Where's that money going to come from, in your opinion, to fill that gap? They're going to raise taxes. I know that uh, Oliver Baines was on here. He wants right. to raise taxes. Yeah, it's not a popular th thing. Th to no, do. It, there, there was that the mention of a public uh, safety measure going on. Um, I don't know about that. I, I think. Uh, well, I want to know where the money is going to come from to fill this gap. Layoffs. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, perhaps layoffs. Uh, perhaps concessions from some of the some of the labor groups. Uh, maybe so? all of the above. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Your job won't be in jeopardy. I hope. But maybe. Let's Maybe we never know. <laughs> <laughs> we but you think layoffs is a real possibility for next for I, this next uh, fiscal? I do. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Off. I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule is it out. Is that right? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. What areas of the city would you say? God, I think it would be across the board, across the board uh, cutback. So we'll see what the, what the voters decide uh, this upcoming June, and then we'll kind of just uh, adjust from there. Is the mayor, in your opinion, do you think? I mean, I don't know. It's just an opinion. Sure. You think she's trying to bust all the unions over at City Hall? I've uh, heard that comment made before I, I don't I don't know if it's true or not I don't know if she's trying to bust all all the unions um, she's trying to wear them down uh, well she's negotiating and and that's what happens it's got to be a, a but don't you state. wear the other party down when you're when you try to negotiate <laughs> well, that's the purpose <laughs> of negotiation sometimes you know they go high you go low and you meet in the middle but yeah. that's ultimately well I think at the end of the day w the mayor and, and the council want the same thing and that's to provide good services for constituents hey a couple of minutes left I want to get back to the school board issue mm -hmm. and that is that uh, reform Fresno unified they're looking to get this uh, ballot uh, measure of course on the ballot in right. November right. to split the district Right. And if they get enough signatures by September or whenever the deadline is, I think by the end of the summer, mm -hmm. they'll put it on the ballot and then it'll go to the voters. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, that's uh, I, I'm never afraid of, of, of democracy at, at its work. Yeah. If that's something that they want. But I, I right now I have reservations over that. I don't think it'd be a good idea for taxpayers, for our students, more importantly. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hey, you're yeah. good enough to come on and answer all the. Yeah. Hey, you answer all the tough questions. You you're, you always grill us, uh, John. But that's that's good though. <laughs> Keep us <laughs> on our toes. <laughs> did I do a bad job today? Is no, he did a great job. Oh, okay. Your your right. your nickname, the Griller, stands. I am. Stance, you well, are who, the Griller. Who nicknamed me that? I Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I, you know, it's nice of you to come appreciate on. Appreciate it, John. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And and come back on again. We'll do. You know, we'll do. Maybe Definitely. you know. Won't be so tough on you next time, but uh, it's always fun. Nice of you to answer all the questions. <laughs> I really, really appreciate your time, Luis Chavez. He's a member of the Fresno Unified School District Board. We appreciate his time in coming on, and uh, want to mention that on Monday we have a special guest, a first-time guest, 
Uh, he's a great guy. He does four hours of talk on the radio. His name is Chris Daniel. He's of KMJ. Uh, he's a great guy. Introduce you to him on Monday. He'll be here for the full half hour. Chris Daniel of KMJ. And your phone calls will be much needed and very important on that day, 436-ME-TV. Have a great weekend. We're back on Monday with Chris Daniel. See you then. Have a great, great weekend. Isn't that a great layout? You son of a gun! This campaign is no good. No good! Darren and Larry, the original Mad Men on Bewitched.